Well, good morning. We're on lesson 39 this morning, and we're working with proportions. And it's really not new to us. If you recall, back in Math 76, we did proportions. And later on in this book, we're going to see them again, only we're going to call them scale factors. And, you know, you recall uh, scale models and dollhouses are in proportion and uh, trains and planes, scale models. Uh, that's where it comes from. And I guess what we need to do is define what is a proportion. Well, a proportion is a statement of two equal ratios. Equal ratios. They can't be unequal. For example, three-ninths is equal to x over 3. Now, if those are equal uh, ratios, then we have a valid proportion. Well, there's a very neat property of proportions. If the ratios are equal, so are their cross products, okay? So I'm going to take 9x and set it equal to 3 times 3. Now what undoes multiplication? What's the opposite of it? Well, it's division. And since there's an equal sign, we have to treat them alike. We recall that. That will cancel, leaving x is equal to 9 divided by 9, which equals 1. And that makes sense because 3 ninths reduces to 1 third. So there's nothing magic about proportions. We've seen them before. We're going to see them again. So let's use this characteristic of cross products to solve a few. See how they work. Let's try this one. X is to 12 as 15 is to 20. Now there's nothing wrong with reducing before you work it out, making your multiplications easier. So this would reduce to x over 12 is equal to 5 goes into that 3 times and goes into that 4 times. So it's equal to 3 fourths. Now we can cross multiply. 4x is equal to 3 times 12. Again, the opposite of multiplication is division, treating both sides of that equal sign alike. Now I can cancel, so x is equal to 9. Can you check your answer? Sure you can. You can take 9 over 12 is equal to 15 over 20, and without reducing, just go ahead and say 9 times 20 is equal to 15 times 12. Well, 9 times 20 is 180, and that's 120 and 60, that's 180. So we got it right. You can check them. Now later on as you get more confident, you won't have to check them. Let's try a couple more and we'll let you go. How about 8 is to 3 as G is to 24? Well, I can't reduce right yet, but I'm going to cross multiply. Now you'll notice I always put, because Mathematicians work left to right. I always put my variable on the left side. You don't have to, but it makes it easier to work with. And that equals 8 times 24. Opposite of multiplication is division, treating both sides alike. So g is equal to 3 goes into that once, goes into that 8 times. It's equal to 8 times 8. So g is equal to 64. We won't check that, but if we did, I can tell you it's correct. All right, the last one. Not difficult. Don't panic. You know how to do these. 63 is to y as 24 is to 4.8. Now, if you looked at that, both 24 and 48 are divisible by 24. So I'm going to go ahead and divide them, and that's going to be equal to 1 over, and 24 into 4.8, here's my decimal, goes 2 times. But it's decimal 2, so that's 0 0.2. All right, so 63y is equal to 1 over 0 0.2. Now when I cross multiply, I really get 1y, right? 
but since it's 1, we don't have to write it. Just leave the y. And that's equal to 63 by 0 0.2. Now you recall when we multiply, you can take the numbers themselves. So y is equal to 63 times 2 is 126. But I've got a decimal place there. So y is equal to 12.6. We're starting to put things together. We did a lot of this in Math 76 and now we're going to start moving a little faster because we're in something called pre-algebra. I'll tell you tomorrow what that means, but most of you already know. Okay? We'll see you tomorrow.